All right. So are we, are we ready in terms of Mackenzie? We good in terms of the um, people? All right. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. And do we need roll call? Since recording we're all here? in progress. I don't think we need roll call, do we? Nope. We're all here. Don't we always I don't think so. Yeah, we always do roll call. We always do it. Okay, I'll defer to past president. Yeah. All right, Director Balboni here. Vice President Luther. Director LeHue here. Director Christensen here. President Jaffe. All right, no public hearings. It's an opportunity for board members to remove items from the consent agenda. I am gonna move remove 4.6 because there were two employees requesting that it be removed. I don't see them here, so it might be very, yeah. We resolve that. Okay. I'm gonna remove it. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any other items to remove? I was wondering if we could remove 4.7 as well. Thank you. Okay, so 4.7. Four, oh, 4. 4. 7. 7. Okay, so that like use 4.1 through 4.5. Oh, you want to comment on something first? Oh, no, no, I wanted to pull it also. So I can wait till 4.7. Okay. Um, any... 4.1 through 4.5. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. So there's no public members here. Uh, and I forgot to take public comment, but there was well, no I public. She read the room. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody here. So um, there's no public members for oral communications. Is there any oral communications from board members? Nope. Seeing none. Move to six. No reports. 7.1 is no conditional or unconditional will serves. And that brings us to 7.2. And Leslie is on uh, screen. Oh, there she is. She's sorry. Yeah, little... I'm I'm remote. I'm recovering from COVID, so oh. I don't want to infect anybody if if I possibly can avoid Thank it you. here. So I'm remoting in tonight. And she's put together, uh, I think, twelve slides, uh, and one slide specific as to what's changed since you last seen it, but. Yeah. I'll hand it back to it, Leslie. We should move. We should move through it fairly quickly. But if you have any questions, please go ahead and let me know. Okay. Um, Melanie, are you gonna? You, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Okay, great. So, Melanie, are you gonna go ahead and pull up the presentation? It's up. It's up. It's up. Can you see it? I cannot. But Imagine. that's okay. I, I've got it up on my end, so we'll just well, walk through. Do you um, think that CCTV can see? No, that's okay. You don't need, I, I've got it on my end. So tonight, um, we're bringing back the 2024-25 draft budget. You last saw it at the uh, first meeting in May at the budget workshop. Very little has changed since that time, but I'm going to go ahead and walk through it briefly just um, just to kind of refresh everyone's memory. Oh, there it is. So go ahead and advance the slide. Um, just give you a quick overview of the budget process. Uh, we did have the budget workshop, I guess it was April 16th, not May. Um, on April 16th, and that was the first opportunity you had to take a look at the budget um, and to look at our budget projections. Tonight, June 4th, is um, your first opportunity to consider adoption of the budget. You've been presented in the packet with the full budget document. We do have a backup date available if there are further revisions necessary, and that's the June 18th board meeting. But we do need to adopt a balanced budget by the July 1st deadline. So it will need to be adopted either this evening or at the June 18th meeting. 
And so um, you have been given a fairly uh, large budget document, and I'm just gonna walk through the budget components for you real quick so you kind of know what's in there. Um, the budget document has a number of uh, components that are required by the Government Finance Officers uh, Association's uh, budget award criteria. Um, they do request that we take a look at our budget from a strategic planning perspective. So we include all of our strategic planning efforts, um, our missions, our goals, our values, our any strategic initiatives that we are focusing on in this budget. And so those are all included in the budget document. Um, the budget document does begin with a transmittal letter from management, um, which kind of provides a context for the whole budgeting process that it kind of includes the economic conditions that we set the uh, budget under and the kind of the operating environment that we're in right now. And it kind of forms that context for the budget itself. Then there is a budget overview that provides some information on the community, uh, about the district, about the district's accounting and financial policies, our long-term planning efforts, and our strategic planning and initiatives. Um, the component that still needs to be added to the budget document are our performance metrics, and I hope to add those to the budget before I send it in to the GFOA award committee. The other component then is our operating budget, and that's all of our operating revenues, all of our rate revenues, um, grants, uh, um, all of our operating expenditures, personnel, wages, all of that stuff that kind of goes into the operating day-to-day -day operating budget and, and water rates revenue picture. And then we move into the project budget, which is of course our operating projects and our capital improvement projects. And then um, those are further broken down into funded and unfunded projects. There is a small list of unfunded projects included in the budget that could be considered uh, if opportunities become available, if funding were to become available or another project was postponed uh, due to regulatory reasons, then we could escalate one of the projects off of the unfunded list. And then the last part of the budget, of course, includes our non-operating budget, which is all of our debt service, um, our treasury management, which is our investment portfolios, um, as well as our reserve uh, funds and our reserve policy, and then an appendix that includes your acronyms and your glossary of terms and, and some other financial policies in there. So that's what's all included in this large 200-page document that you've got. So let's go to the next screen. And this is this is one that you've seen before. I presented this at the budget workshop, but just to kind of circle back around to the economic conditions that we're facing when we're setting a budget like this, um, inflation is starting to trend a little lower than it was when we were seeing that peak inflation rate back in 2022, 23. It is starting to reach, um, reasonable proportions in March, it was about three and a half percent. We usually hope for some for something around 2%, but it is starting to come down. But what's still trending very high is the building cost index and the construction cost indexes um, are up considerably. Um, and that does affect us because that's building materials, that's uh, PVC pipe and different things that we use to maintain the water system. So those costs are still quite high. Um, the other component that affects us economically, of course, is our water consumption. Our um, March water use was only 0.12% over the prior year. Um, so we're not seeing a much of a rebound at all. Our water use year to date is uh, less than 2% over the prior year. So we're holding fairly steady on water use. We're not seeing it bounce back up very much. So we're still working with lower than uh, normal water consumption, and that does affect our water revenue. Then we can go to the next page. So since we have met in April, we did make some small changes to the budget. We added uh, another project to the funded project list, and that was to replace the acoustic ceiling tiles in the headquarters office building. They're starting to crack and flake a little bit. Um, and then we increased the computer services budget um, by $5,000 for the WaterSmart single sign-on um, annual subscription fee that we have to pay. And that single sign-on, what that enables us to do is that enables our customers to be able to 
log into a single site to both view their water consumption and pay their bills. So that's a very advantageous service. So we're going to want to hang on to that. And then as a result of those increases, our operating contingency reserve actually increased about $2,000 as well. Those are the only changes I've got in the budget that you're seeing tonight versus what you saw in April. We can go ahead and go to the next screen. So our operating revenue forecast, as we looked at it in April, this is the same, the same slide. Um, we are expected to um, generate 8.8% more in operating revenue, excluding grants than we did the prior year. Now we adopted a rate increase in March, 2024, that was to be a 10% increase. We're not seeing that full 10% because of de depressed water use. So we're still gonna be a little bit under our revenue projections compared to finance plan. Um, the water sales, as you can see from the graph, the water sales is dropping considerably while the service charge is increasing because we went to that 50 50 split instead of the instead of the 70 30 or the 60 60 40 60 40 we've now gone to 50 50. no and no we're 60 40. it just went the other way it's 60 percent service charges now i don't know why i get hung up on that 50 50 yeah. so bad i do okay. too so 40% from revenues from water sales and 60% of the revenues from service charges. And that's why you're seeing that flip flop, um, more money coming in from service charges than we are getting from water sales. And then our other operating revenue is um, increasing just slightly. Um, and most of that is due to uh, delinquent fees and installation fees. And that's only going up about $100,000 from the prior year. And then on the operating expense side, um, our personnel costs are holding steady. Um, we expect those to decrease slightly over the prior year. Um, we And that's largely due to the suspension of that pre-funding. Um, we had elected to suspend 1.5 million in pension and OPEB pre-funding in order to be able to adopt that lower 10% rate increase um, as opposed to the 12%. So when we look at this, we are seeing a decrease in our um, personnel costs because of that deferment of the um, pre-funding. But wages are almost where they were last year, 0.32% over where they were last year. Um, personnel benefits are decreasing like 16.21%, but again, that's because of that uh, suspension of the pre-funding, as well as the suspension of the other post-employment benefit pre-funding. So we've seen those costs decrease this year, which is a good thing um, to keep in mind when we're taking a look at that difference between the 12% rate increase and then the 10% that we actually adopted. And then under the next slide, we're looking at operating expenses other than personnel costs. And we've seen, um, we've seen an increase in operating expenses of about 6.9 million. The vast majority of that is the Pure Water SoCal operational costs that will be coming online once the plant is put into um, uh, active use. Um, so we do have that budgeted right there. We've got some minor increases and decreases in other categories, um, but again, they kind of net out to a difference of about uh, $9 million. We are. 0.9 million dollars, 900,000 um, dollars, and a great majority of that 900,000 is actually the um, pension and OPEB prefunding that we're postponing. So there's there's been very little movement in our operating expenses for the year, except for those two components: the Pure Water SoCal operations and the deferment of that prefunding. Everything else is holding fairly steady. And then on the next screen. We've got our funded capital improvement projects. We went through these um, uh, when we looked at it in April, so I won't read all through them for you, but I will point out there, it's kind of small to read. I will point out that those projects that are shown in gold are funded through either grants or low interest loans. That's our Cunison well uh, drilling and the design of the Cunison treatment plant. We've got the Moosehead Drive uh, main replacement design and then the Pure Water SoCal 
uh, completion at 25.2 million, and then the optimization study, which is funded by the MGA grant. The rest of the the rest of the items on the list are funded through our PAYGO funding. And we can move to the next screen. <clears throat> we only have a handful of unfunded capital improvement projects that we can move up if something else should stall or funding becomes available. Um, one of those is um, if we decided to move on the Aptos Creek property acquisition, that's that's available for um, moving up if we need to. And then we've got some main replacements in the uh, Clubhouse Drive area, St. Andrews, Wingfoot, and Baltusrol. That's over by the um, uh, Country Club well in that area. Um, then we've got Huntington Drive over by the Polo Grounds. And then we have a small transmission main, uh, Victory Lane. So those are available to move up if, if we can do so. We move to the next slide. And so that brings us to kind of our reserve picture. Um, our operating contingency reserve, when combined with our rate stabilization reserve, is, is to um, approximate 40% of our operating expenses. So when our operating expenses increase dramatically, like they do with the uh, Pure Water Soquel operations, our operating contingency reserves also have to increase. So those have increased 2.2 million. Um, we are going to establish a couple of reserves for Pure Water Soquel, or I say we are actually have already established them, but I will be bringing a reserve policy back to the board at the next board meeting that will formalize these um, these additions to our reserve policy. We're gonna um, we're required under the contract with Jacobs to establish a repair and replacement reserve. So we're getting that set up as as uh, soon as we can, so that it's ready to, to ready to put funds in there as soon as the contract is executed. And then we are setting up an operating reserve, um, which will be kind of a temporary reserve that we're going to put in place to ensure that we are taking money from the rates we're collecting now and moving it into an operating reserve for Pure Water Soquel, so that when we do start up operations, we have the funds available to go ahead and pay the contract um, under those terms. We are, our revenues are cyclical. We bring in more revenue in the summer than we do in the winter. So having this operating reserve for Pure Water, for Pure Water Soquel is gonna be critical because we need to build up a little bit of a balance in there so that when we first begin needing to pay those bills to Jacobs that we've got the, the funds already ready to go. So we'll have both of those reserves established. We've also got, of course, our water capacity fees and our capital facilities reserves. Um, and then we've got our general reserves. Our general reserves um, decreased quite a bit this year by about 10 million. And that's mainly because of the money that had been moved in there from grants and loans that we've now moved on back out to pay um, some of our expenses. So that's dropped to about 259,000. And so we can go to the next slide and this may be it. Yeah, that's it. That's what we've got in the budget this time. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. If you've got any recommendations on any revisions to the document, I'm happy to take those as well. Um, and if you are prepared to, um, I would ask that you consider by motion to go ahead and uh, adopt the 2024-25 budget. All right, thank you, Leslie. Is there any public comment on this? Marilyn, this is specifically on the budget. Uh, yeah, I was watching what you have up there, including for a smart meter, costs on the computer, extra costs, and... Um, I don't think there was anything about smart meters. Yeah, there was. Computers. The, on, on there. Oh. Something like $5,000. And... Um, with all the equipment used for the pure water, Santa Cruz, uh, 
here are some uh, people, th there's an overview of what is this costing, really. Uh, people study electronics ecological hazard. You know it's not possible to manufacture anything without fossil fuels. We're always talking about the carbon footprint. You know that mining, refining, making, and applying chemicals, transporting substances to factories. Erlen, I'll let you go for another is, 45 this seconds. Is budget. But this is not related to the budget. It is. It's the cost of this project that are not exactly included there. Packaging and shipping final products consume at least 66% of computers' lifetime energy use. Likewise, most of every device is toxic waste. A lot of toxic waste here is generated before its end user turns it on for the first time. People are charging electric vehicles overheat the nearby transformer and shorten the transformer's lifespan from 30 to 40 years to three. All right. Every kilogram. Thank, thank you very much. These are budget costs to the community. Okay, is there any questions from board members? Tom? It's actually not really a question. I just, I don't know how much of it you did Leslie versus Ryan and others in the department, but I was just thinking like, this is so much more than a budget anymore. Like, I think if a, a customer wanted to see what our goals are in a larger scale, a smaller scale, where we're putting our priorities, what's going on pretty much throughout the district, this is quite the document. So just my compliments, um, and I, I was thinking once it's published, I'm sure it'll be available on our website easily. Because if anybody wanted to refer and know anything about what we're up to, it's a really great document. So thank you. Any other? Yeah, I had a, a, the compliment too, but I think Tom said it for all of us. It was really a. A thing amazing. of beauty, this budget. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let them say it for me. I'm going to say and, it uh, And really enjoyed reading it and also just your uh, discussion of it. But I was just curious about the metrics, the performance metrics that you were planning to put into the budget. Are they part so, of the budget? So what the um, Government Finance Officers Association asks for in a budget document like this is to is to see some of our strategic initiatives and how we're performing against those. So some of them are just um, workload um, metrics. You know, how many how many phone calls we're answering, how much time is spent on the phone, how many rebates um, are we, um, how many rebates are we uh, providing to our customers in terms of settled rebates, and um, how many leaks are we addressing? How many service outages have there been? How many boil water notices have there been? So just kind of year over year, just kind of looking at some of those performance uh, benchmarks a little bit and seeing where we're trending and where we're improving. So that's the type of performance metric we'd be looking at. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I was, I was curious. Okay, quick, um, I had a comment and a um, clarification. Um, on uh, the um, funded capital projects, I was so happy to see the chromium-6 treatment plant coming in line in the next uh, two years, $16 million, and, um, you know, including um, engineering consultant and design. It's a, it's a big, big piece. Um, there is a little typo in there. Instead of parts per billion, it says parts per billing. So oh, just okay. a quick Thank note on that. that. <laughs> um, and, you know, just proud of our, our district for um, stepping up. Um, I also wanted to um, clarify about, um, like, maybe where in the budget is there an allowance for negotiating compensation 
during the next phase of meetings with union workers. I'm looking under the personnel salaries contingencies, and there seems to me to be a reduced amount um, for, for uh, th this upcoming budget as to opposed to the previous years. What, and, what page is that? Do you know? Uh, I don't know what page it's on, but it's under personnel salaries contingencies. Right, and those contingencies, personnel salary contingencies, include a lot of things like overtime pay, yeah, uh, call pay, kind of specialty pay items. Yes, go under some of those contingencies. Yeah, and it's as it's a lot less this year than it was the last two years, and I'm just curious about that. Well, we don't have any um, uh, MOUs open for negotiation this year like we did last year. Okay, and then is there room for uh, allowances for ongoing negotiating, or is it considered done? We typically, I'll, I'll let Tracy speak to this if she's there, but we typically don't negotiate between MOU cycles. Got it. Would you like me to speak more on that? I, Leslie just summed it up. We have a, a negotiated agreement with all of our, um, our bargaining units um, we negotiated a three-year deal, as you guys recall, and the next time that those uh, documents are open for negotiations with SCIU and the Mid-Management Employees Group, um, they both expire in 2026. So no contingency necessary for that. It's a, it's a set amount. No, we don't have reopeners for salary, um, though that's that's the salary agreement, and we've agreed to um, what is con contained in the MOU for salary increases. What we typically do at this agency is we have COLA that's already designed within our MOUs. Our cost of living allowance is based on the CPI index on the October, um, and so you'll see salary schedules come through on an annual basis that reflect those increases that we've negotiated. Okay, so it's a known quantity. Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do have management uh, coming up at, in a month or two for- uh, The management MOU right. expires, it was on a one year. We've done, we've done a series of one years and it expires July of 2024. Thank you. And so there, I, I believe there is a small amount in the budget for that MOU. Okay, but it strikes me odd again that it's uh, less than the last couple of years. Well, last year we had three MOUs. We had the field and office SEIU MOU, the mid-management mid MOU, and the management MOU that were all negotiated. Uh huh. This year we just have one. Okay, thank you. Michelle? You know this stuff. <laughs> so I want a second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever it is, really interesting and, and well done document. And please pass it on to everyone who participated in, in developing it, Leslie. Will do. Uh, um, and I actually think like Tom said, there's so much more here than just the budget. So perhaps when we post it to our website, we could call it budget and whatever the appropriate, you know, district overview or something so that people know they can go to that if they want more to, to get the material that was in there in addition to the budget. Okay. Um, very accessible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. very well written and, and easy to follow. Um, my question is on debt ratios. We're above the minimum and above the re the required amount. And is is there con just with with all the the debt we're taking on? with uh, Pure Water Soquel, it seems like we're able to, to handle that and keep the debt ratios high enough, correct? Right now our debt ratio is at 1.9. We have set a, a target of 1.7, so we're only about 20 points above that. 
Um, our debt covenants have an absolute minimum floor of 1.2. So I start to get a little bit nervous when we drop below two, um, mm -hmm. but that's that's kind of what the entire rate study was directed toward was ensuring that we had sufficient operating revenue to ensure that we were meeting those debt coverage ratios. Okay. And, and I believe, um, Leslie, 1.2 is a uh, requirement beyond the district, you know, like a, a, right. a regulation. Statu but, statutory requirement. Right. And we have an internal uh, goal, right? That's higher than that. 1.7. Okay, 1.7. I'm not sure she said that. Maybe she did. She did? Okay. I'm focus on that. All right. Well, really good job um, and really good pictures, too. Yeah. So. Melanie provided me with a lot of good pictures. Oh, no. I like them of everybody. <laughs> yeah. And if, and if I – can I uh, – this oh, might yeah. be my last time to be able to comment on the budget, so I just want to uh, heap it on, uh, too. Um, Leslie, thank you so much for being the, you know, uh, consummate financial professional as, as through a GM lens, having you there in that corner and producing this. Uh, as I said, I remember the old days of the budget was just a bunch of numbers. Now, I mean, you wouldn't even have to look at the numbers. You could look at the graphs and the people and get a feel for our agency here. So that in itself is amazing. But it, knowing and and what you do, seeing it uh, third party uh, proved out by all the agencies that we've had to deal with in the last six or seven years and the praise coming from these other professionals who know their stuff much more than I do and in, in your world here um, has, you know, showed us uh, here across this board and all, all the executive team um, how good you are and how, how you lead your team. And just it takes such a relief uh, off this position, knowing you're there. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for that and for the entire time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so no more questions. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And that's the motion that's in, in the packet, I take it. Yes. Okay. So it passes unanimously. So that now we'll circle back on the consent agenda items. 4.6. I pulled this because it was asked to be pulled. Um, but um, there's nobody here to talk on it. And it's a very clear memo. So I'd like to... Uh, are there any questions or comments by other directors? If not, I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None. So it passes unanimously. And 4.7. Jennifer, you pulled this, so. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to comment that I understand the intent of this letter is to support Coachella and the water districts and in their request for the action to extend the Chromium 6 regulatory compliance timeline. And I think that's laudable, but I'm also kind of thinking that maybe it's sending the wrong message to the public. Um, we're taking the action, you know, as the, like the do-gooders to do the right thing and um, the Chromium 6, the state has been talking about it, I think, since 2014, of bringing it down to um, these levels. So it's like not something new. So I don't... That, that, that's quite, not quite true. Oh. So, so they, they established it, and then it was fought in... It was in 2017, it was overturned. But I'm overturned, saying that But so yeah. the new ones just come out. And yeah, yeah. To and, me, it's just... Maybe I'm curious what Rochelle thinks, working and building things, and what Taj thinks, but... You're just trying to be fair with the agencies to have enough time to actually do what you need to do. I mean, a six, $16 million project is hard to get rolling instantly, and it sounds like there's a time conflict. That the legislature didn't check that? Or is that what happened? Yeah, we didn't get asked. Um, they proposed their compliance periods 
without any inquiry from any agency, we all commented on it saying it's too tight, but they didn't accept that comment and, and just pushed it through. And for an agency our size, the larger agencies have two years to, to get into compliance. I guess just in a more general thought, I was, I mean, we've known about this um, problem since I've been a rate payer, which has been 30 years in this district, I've heard about Chrome 6. I mean, people talk about it a lot. Um, and the Coachella Water District, their um, proposed um, uh, budget for fixing it is $510 million, and I bet that's, like, underestimating it, that they have a, that's wrong. Yeah, they have a problem. But I just don't know that we want to associate ourselves with them. So I don't know, maybe it's a little thing. I just don't, I know that we want to do coalition building. I get that. Yeah, I, I just think it's a serious, the letter has to be sent, and it's in our interest to be, to let them know that large water districts and small water districts all have the same concern about the timeline. And the other thing is, even though it's been known for a long time, the target hasn't been clear. So until you have that final target, you really don't know how much you're going to build or whether you'll need to or whether your levels will be below what the standard is. So you don't want to waste your customers' money if that's going to change. Yeah, and you know, I jump in here. Okay. I, I'll, I'll just say that, you know, we had that same discussion that you're bringing up because we know that this district, water quality is just number one. There's no, you know, negotiation on meeting the, the regulatory requirements and as the way it should be. Um, I think anytime, you know, they reached out to us, uh, anytime you have a coalition and you're putting this many logos on a letter, uh, asking you know, legislators to change things or extend the deadline in this sense. Um, I guarantee each one of these agencies would want to change something, you know, maybe, maybe except Coachella, maybe. Um, but uh, so there's probably not a perfect letter amongst us, but it, I think the timeline, the, the essence of the letter is um, uh, something, you know, we could support. We, we have gone out ahead of the uh, game before. Taj was front and center of that, the district. Uh, led that effort, and we got, I would say, you know, burned a little bit. They had to pull back, and we spent a lot of money, and, you know, now we have to recalibrate. Um, so having time to to implement and properly evaluate is probably a good thing. So it's a balance, you know, but I, we certainly, if there's a way we could do this and make sure we're not sending the wrong message if you think we're doing that water quality-wise, um, then I'd say that's a good idea. Yeah. And in terms of the exposure to to our water supply, we are we aren't using those wells that are highly uh, contaminated with chrome six, are we? We're blending, We're right? Blending. blending it to keep it below the level. You're right that there are two wells that that we're not using in the Selva Beach, and then. Well, the PFAS uh, regulations are a huge issue, but that's very different. Yes. Yeah. Oh, maybe I should turn it on, darn. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think we all need to support one another as agencies when it's a, a fair item and Regulators love to make regulations and don't have, um, you know, they don't care what it costs or who can do it that fast. And yeah. at, as Ron had mentioned, we've been ahead of the curve. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, we've, you know, started to implement something to reduce the chromium I'm, ahead of regulations. Yeah. And it, there's something through the process, you know, learning about Chromium 6, I mean, Aaron Brockovich, of course, is what comes to mind. Um, but what I learned was ingestion of water with Chromium 6 does not create a problem because you're, the, the stomach acids alter the form of Chromium 6 to something that is not harmful. 
it's the vapors that that are the problem. I read some scientific studies that disagree with that, that the ingestion is a problem. But anyway. Well, it depends on maximum how much on consumption. But this is, this is clearly just us. I mean, the way I'm thinking of this letter is us supporting and, and doing some, you know, nice collaboration and reaching out and helping support these districts because we are doing something different. So it's not about us. Um, and I understand the second part of the letter is also that the um, requirements for notifying the public about the HEX um, is, about the chromium-6 is also pretty, uh, you know, Orwellian, right? Because they have to be notified every three months and, you know, it's very strict. But I just don't know that we're doing the right thing. We're the great people. Do we want to support them? That's just my little question and I'm hearing you guys saying, yes, we should. We're, it's not supporting them. We're making our views. It, this affects us also, what, what they're, they're proposing. We don't have a plant yet. Right. We may not meet our deadline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really a serious thing. It's very, very tight. And, and the current schedule that's proposed by Black & Veatch doesn't meet it. So what would happen is then we would, co we would be um, in the same kind of... Um, it boat as them, and thank you, in terms of a violation. And yeah, so yeah. that's what the letter was really about, was to ensure process, especially those that are either with a huge debt of $500,000 million of a project versus we're, we're funding ours. If we still don't meet the timeline, we're still all together um, prospectively going to be in violation. I think it does also just, I think, unify that these are, unfunded mandates that are coming forth, whether it's for Chrome 6 or for PFOS. Mm -hmm. And that is important. Um, we, you know, that I think, you know, with seawater intrusion, we were able to get some funds, but there aren't always these bu bucket of money that we can get. So. Yeah, okay. Reading between the lines of the state budget, you know, the, logically they would provide the funding of this, if, if it was that mm -hmm. imperative after being in suspension for how many years now? Um, several years uh, since we dropped the plans that we had for a Chrome 6 decontamination um, treatment. But uh, they would have provided some low cost, low interest loans or something to help water districts get, just jumpstart this project. But they aren't doing that. So that it's really important to clarify and give water districts enough time to take care of this. I guess um, addressing your question, though, I mean, we could potentially write our own letter, right? And I don't know whether there's more value with tagging along someone else's letter or writing a separate one. You know, I'm just saying yeah. if we had specific that's, that's, way we wanted to word it. That definitely is an alternative. We could do that. that. That would be the alternative and just say, here's we're, we're ahead of the curve. We've... We're, we want to do the right thing. This still isn't enough time. I like that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I, th I think we should Good idea. get that message, but I don't know which is more powerful to the... Well, we could, we could write a letter, reference this letter, say we wanted to write our own because we're in a, in a little bit of our own boat. Yeah. But we support the longer timeline. Is that I what I'm... Really, saying? really appreciate that. That makes me feel very good about our district. Would that be okay? And then maybe the uh, noticing too. You're okay. With my yes. Yes. So it, it wouldn't have to be a long letter. No. No. You just no. refer to this letter, but you know, point out that you might know. reference this and just say, we know they're sending this letter, but we wanted to just say we we really believe in the t the extended timeline and change in nursing. I would hate to get, see us lost in the shuffle on this, though. Would the legislative timeline allow for us to? Come up with a letter and approve it at the 8th, June 18th. Meeting. Uh, yeah. They, when were they? When did they say they were? They wanted them. Well, this is the, well, May 30th. And then I mean, I'm okay with doing both, but you know, if you just want. But yeah, I don't know, Tracy. Do you know when the, the, the as far as legislators meeting and all that? Is this? Is there? Do you have any clue? Because I know you were involved in that for a while. I'm putting you on the spot, probably. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Um, let's see, let us see what we can do. If we can send a letter separately and make an impact, because there's a timing issue, we will. Um, if not, if we just like it's due, it was kind of due a couple of days ago. I said, look, I, we got to take this to the board. This is worthy of our board discussion in relative to our policies. So if we 
don't have time, we can't put it together this week because the, the legislators, if times pass, then we'll add our logo to this. Does that sound okay? But if we have time, we, we will do in a letter or just we could go the other way. I think yeah, we should so, do both. Yeah, but it, so if we don't have time, sign this one okay. and then send a subsequent letter. Okay. I'll make that motion so that we, we will um, write our own letter unless there's not adequate time for that to be effective. And if, if it is not, we will sign on to this one. And I'll second. And, and follow up with our own letter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 in addition. In addition, yeah. Wait, I'm confused. So we're going to write our own letter if there's time. And then what about adding our logo to this letter? No, no, no. We're going to add the logo. If this has to be sent right away. Yeah. We're the only reason. That. And we're then we're going to write a letter, you know, Afterwards, yeah, my, identify my, our own issues with it. Like my motion describing was, our project, or you know what we propose, but you know what I mean. Um, I want to say well, he, he, Tom, you made the motion, so I just was going to clarify. So, if if we have time, mm -hmm. we'll write our own letter. If we do not, we'll sign on to theirs. Bruce's addition is that even if we sign on to theirs, we still send a letter from us. So I'm okay with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're sending a letter either way. If if we can get in at a time, we won't need to sign on to theirs. Here. We're sending a okay? letter, and if we can add our logo, we'll do it. Yeah, It might be a small thing, but it really, that, thank you. Yeah, I think it may be worth really worth describing the situation of a small district, and it might not, well, we might be buried in... You know, all the logos because we have a small water district. It'd be more impactful too to have. If you yeah. have one two letters, well, I think it would be. Time, but if they read it yeah. after they vote it, it doesn't matter. Yes. Exactly. I still want exactly. some message getting across. So, if if it's the only so way to get it across in time, you're saying that under there's I we do that. I personally we still send our own. Good, and I personally thought this was a good letter too. I think it describes the, it, a pretty untenable situation that should be corrected. Right. Your point, to, Rochelle, is that it's. A second letter is useless? I think, yeah, I think it's useless, and it's going to just be extra work that nobody's going to do anything about. They're going to say thank you, and we already voted. If this was having to be in by um, May 30th. Well, that's that's what they're asking. I, I'm not sure of the legislative schedule. That's why I was yeah. Tracy was involved with that. Might, um, I'll determine I'll check, that. I will. Check around before you get started on yeah letter. i will i'll dive, it, dive into it rochelle it sounds like you don't support writing a subsequent letter that it has if, no impact if it's going to have no impact I see her point if we missed the deadline we could be busy so, yeah. that, that's why i think it's really important to approve this so I'll, letter i'll, and I'll we'll remove it. my addition we'll remove that addition we'll stick with the so simple one, one letter, letter started with which was final simplification huh? we will write our own letter if it's within a reasonable, if an effective time limit, huh? and if not, we'll sign on to theirs. Okay. That's a good. And who seconded? Uh, I did. Jennifer. And you're good with, with that motion? Yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. So that we're now going to go to closed session. There's nobody here, so there's no public comments. And after closed session, we'll report out. Right. So we'll take about a, a couple minute break while Mackenzie gets herself set up and and uh, I make sure CTV is.